Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the Sea of Galilee. This is another guaranteed place we know Jesus not only traveled on, but spent a large portion of his ministry around. Now, before I touch on the biblical highlights, let's look at some facts about this famous sea. Yes, technically this isn't a sea, it's a freshwater lake. Lakes are bodies of water completely surrounded by land. Seas are larger and partially surrounded by land with an opening that leads to an ocean. However, the Sea of Galilee isn't alone in this misnaming issue. Further south in Israel, you'll come across the Dead Sea, which I visit later in the tour. And north of Iran, you have the Caspian Sea, which is believed to be the largest lake in the world. Now, the Sea of Galilee is about 12 miles long and 8 miles wide and is a major freshwater source for the country. In the Bible, depending upon which translations you use, you will see the Sea of Galilee referred to as the Sea of Kinnereth, also spelled with a K, Kinnereth, or Kinneret, Gennesaret, and Tiberias. I'm going to only focus on the main events that happened on the Sea of Galilee using the scriptures, but at the end of this video, I will touch on some of the events that happened around this beautiful body of water. In the Old Testament, the Sea of Galilee is mentioned primarily as a boundary defining the borders of the land. Numbers 34.11 says, The border shall go down and reach to the eastern side of the Sea of Kinnereth. Isaiah references the Sea of Galilee when prophesying about Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Later, in the New Testament, Matthew quoted this prophecy in Matthew chapter 4, verses 13 through 16, as being fulfilled when Jesus began living in Capernaum, which is on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Now, as I said earlier, much of Jesus' ministry was either on or around the Sea of Galilee. In Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, we see him calling the first disciples. In Mark chapter 4, verse 1, we see him getting to the boat that was on the Sea of Galilee so that he could teach the crowd. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Speaking of boats, in 1986, the Sea of Galilee receded due to a severe drought, and this boat was excavated that dates to the first century AD. This would have been the type of boat Jesus and his disciples would have used, which is fascinating. He also performed miracles on the Sea of Galilee. Mark chapter 4, verses 37 through 41. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And he performed his most famous miracle on the Sea of Galilee when he and Peter walked on water. Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. When he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Jesus also performed many miracles using fish. Matthew chapter 17, 27 says, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Luke chapter 5 verses 4 through 6. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When he had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. After Jesus' resurrection, we see in John chapter 21, verses 4 through 14, that Jesus met them on the shore, told them to throw their net to the right side of the boat, and they had another miraculous catch of fish. And then we also see in John chapter 21, verses 15 through 23, that Jesus restored Peter after Peter denied him three times after Jesus was arrested. So that was the majority of the 
big events that happened on the Sea of Galilee. Now let's take a quick look at the notable areas around the sea. Here is Tiberias, which was a city that we stayed in for two nights, where we were blessed with these views both in the morning and at night. Now the ancient city of Tiberias is located just south of where the city is today, but we didn't have the opportunity to go there. Next up is the city of Magdala, home of Mary Magdalene. And they have a synagogue that still has the original tiles that Jesus would have walked on. I will give my full review of Magdala in an upcoming video. Then we have Gennesaret, which is the city Jesus and the disciples docked at right after Jesus and Peter walked on water. The town today is called Genosar, which is where the first century boat is on display and the place we left from when we took the boat ride to Capernaum. Next, we have the Mount of Beatitudes, where Jesus gave his longest teaching recorded in the Bible in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. Again, unfortunately, this was not on the list of places to visit on our tour. Then we come to Capernaum, which was where a lot of miracles and moments took place here that I will be covering in my next review. Then we have Bethsaida, another place we didn't get to visit, but this is the hometown of Peter, Andrew, and Philip. And along with Capernaum and Chorazon, Jesus pronounced judgment on them for their unbelief. Then we have the Gadarenes, which is an area that Jesus cast out two demon-possessed men who were living among the caves. The demons were cast into a herd of pigs, and the pigs ran off a cliff and drowned in the sea. Now, kind of hard to pinpoint an exact location on the water, but somewhere Jesus calmed the storm and walked on the water, which we already discussed. And finally, let's talk about the feeding of the multitudes. Some believe that the feeding of the 4,000 happened on the east coast of the Sea of Galilee in the vicinity of the Gadarenes. And according to Luke, the feeding of the 5,000 is believed to have been just south of Bethsaida, also on the east side of the sea. However, in between Gennesaret and the Mount of Beatitudes is a city called Tabga, which was not a town in the first century, but during the Byzantine period, 4th century, a church was built here commemorating the feeding of the 5,000. As great as these two miracles are, people sitting on grass and eating is impossible to pinpoint archaeologically. Again, being here on the body of water that Jesus traversed back and forth many times and even walked on was so incredible to experience. And on the last morning we stayed in Tiberias, I even took the opportunity to stand in the Sea of Galilee. This was so cool. This concludes my review of the Sea of Galilee. In my next review, I will be bringing you to Capernaum, Jesus' base of operations during his ministry and the location of many miracles and moments that are recorded in the Bible. But until next time, thank you for watching, and God bless.